heart attacks, and other cardiovascular events are the leading cause of line of duty deaths in the United States Fire Service. I'm Dr. Stephanos Kales, Associate Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and Division Chief of Occupational Medicine at the Cambridge Health Alliance. I'm leading a team of researchers to identify the key risk factors behind cardiovascular events among firefighters and to identify strategies to help prevent these events in the future. Our team has been studying cardiovascular disease among firefighters for over a decade. In 2007, we received a FEMA research and development grant to investigate the role of physical fitness in modifying firefighters' risks for heart attacks and other cardiovascular events. We know that among firefighters, almost half of line of duty deaths are due to heart attacks and other cardiovascular events. We also know that these events are not random, many are preventable, and sadly, when we investigate these events, we often find that the firefighter who has fallen victim had underlying heart disease that was either known or simply had been previously undetected. This situation has to change. Our aim is to identify key risk factors that could lead to preventive strategies to decreasing firefighters' risks and helping firefighters to stay healthy. Our previous research was the first to definitively demonstrate that the risk of a heart disease event was markedly higher during the conduct of physically and psychologically stressful emergency duties or training as compared to non-emergency situations. For example, during fire suppression, the risk of a heart attack or sudden cardiac death is 10 to over 100 times higher than when a firefighter is relaxing in the firehouse. We've come to understand that although heart disease usually develops through atherosclerosis, or the buildup of cholesterol-latent plaques in the arteries, that usually develops slowly over many years, acute events like sudden cardiac death and heart attacks can be triggered by stressful activities like responding to an alarm, fighting a brush or structural fire, or carrying out a difficult rescue. We know in the general population that exercise and better physical fitness slow the progression of atherosclerosis and reduce the risk of a heart attack being triggered by heavy exertion. Our current Harvard research projects, which involve over 1,000 firefighters, are examining their exercise patterns and physical fitness capacities in relationship to heart disease risk factors and their subsequent risk of heart disease events such as heart attacks or sudden cardiac death. Our research utilizes an objective measure of physical fitness known as metabolic equivalence or METS. Firefighting is physically demanding and involves activities such as climbing ladders, advancing charged hose lines, and rescuing victims, all while wearing heavy protective gear and equipment. Therefore, firefighting activities have been estimated to require at least 12 METs. By using treadmill exercise tests and measuring how long a firefighter can exercise on a standard protocol, we can objectively measure that firefighter's physical fitness or aerobic capacity using the peak METs achieved during the test protocol. While our current research project is still underway, we have already observed some very important and dramatic results and findings. For example, when firefighters tell us they exercise very little, that usually corresponds to lower physical fitness, whereas very frequent exercise is associated with much higher aerobic capacities. Moreover, if firefighters are obese, they have much lower physical fitness levels regardless of how often they exercise. In related studies, we've shown that firefighters with higher physical fitness levels have significant decreases in their levels of cardiovascular risk factors. On the other hand, 
we have found that firefighters with low fitness have a tenfold higher risk of having metabolic syndrome, a collection or clustering of risk factors, often associated with prediabetes and much higher heart attack risk. In other words, over 50% of those with the lowest fitness levels have metabolic syndrome, whereas less than 10% of very fit firefighters have this condition regardless of age. This is good news because although firefighters cannot change their age, they can make healthy choices to improve their physical fitness. We have also observed a very similar finding, again with regard to low physical fitness and a much higher risk of abnormal electrocardiograms or EKGs during the standard exercise test protocol. Again, this is just one more finding that demonstrates how firefighters with lower physical fitness are showing markers of much higher risk of future heart attack and other forms of cardiovascular disease. Based on past and our current research, we think at least half of the fatal heart attacks and other cardiovascular events that occur each year in the U.S. Fire Service can be prevented by simple measures. These measures would include avoiding smoking and tobacco product use, treating high blood pressure and high cholesterol aggressively, maintaining a healthy weight and getting regular exercise. Finally, and most importantly, because of the large number of firefighters who suffer cardiovascular events who have had known coronary artery disease, we should restrict firefighters with known coronary heart disease from performing dangerous emergency duties. We're continuing to study many aspects of firefighters' health, in particular those regarding cardiovascular health. As we move forward, we believe we will have even more information in order to more precisely determine a firefighter's subsequent heart attack or cardiovascular disease event risk in relation to their physical fitness or aerobic capacity.